Good morning, I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. It's day 644 of our three-year journey through the Word of God. We're coming today to one of my favorite chapters in Scripture. It's, it's an overlooked favorite chapter, um, but it is a wonderful moment in the history of God's people as Ezra reads the law and the Levites teach the law to God's people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are a people who are called to you through your word. Your spirit calls us to faith through the word of God. And we are a people whose lives and minds are shaped by the word. We need to be people of the word, for the world never stops talking to us. We need to make sure we're always listening to you. So here we are, wanting to hear your word. We pray that you would speak to us. We pray that you would make the centrality and the importance of your word for the people of God so clear to us and that we would be compelled to be even more and more people of your book. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Ezra chapter 8. And all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maaseah on his right hand, and Padiah, Mishael, Malkijah, Hashem, Hashbadanah, Zechariah, and Meshullam on his left hand. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Jeshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shibathai, Hodiah, Maaseah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peleah, the Levites, helped the people to understand the law while the people remained in their places. They read from the book, from the law of God clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to the Lord our God, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy, do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, and to send portions, and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. On the second day, the heads of fathers' houses and all the people with the priests and the Levites came together to Ezra the scribe in order to study the words of the law. And they found it written in the law that the Lord had commanded by Moses that the people of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month, and that they should proclaim it and publish it in all their towns and in Jerusalem. Go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy branches to make booths as it is written. So the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on his roof and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God 
and in the square of the water gate, and in the square of those who had returned from captivity, made booths, and lived in the booths from the days of Jeshua the son of Nun. For from the days of Jeshua the son of Nun to that day, the people of Israel had not done so. And there was very great rejoicing. And day by day, from the first day to the last day, he read from the book of the law of God. They kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day there was a solemn assembly according to the rule. That is Ezra chapter 8. Do you see how wonderful this chapter is? It is such a remarkable event in the history of God's people. We are so accustomed by this time in our study of the Old Testament, we're so accustomed to hearing the Word of God neglected, the Word of God ignored, the Word of God rejected, the Word of God scorned. We're so used to hearing that. Just, thus says the Lord, get out of here, we don't want to hear it, right? Here is Ezra the scribe, who is reading from the book of the Law of Moses. And I want to see here the order in which this progresses. So first, Ezra the priest reads to the people the words of the book of the law from morning until midday. So he's reading the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses, the Torah. He's reading it from morning, about 6, 7 a.m. until midday. For hours, he's reading. And as he's reading, there are other Levites who are there with him on his right hand and on his left. So it's not just all about Ezra. It's Ezra and these elders of Israel, right? The Levites who have the task of doing this. And while that's happening, there's a great crowd and all the men and women and all those who could understand, which means children who were of age to be able to listen and understand anything that they heard, they were also there. I do have one question about this passage, and that is, where are the very, very young children? Are they in like a nursery and who's on nursery duty? But that's how my mind as a pastor starts churning. But anyway, you have everybody who can understand is there and they're listening. Men, women, children together listening. And as they listen, he reads and the people answer, amen, amen. And they lift up their hands and they bow their heads and they worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they hear the word of God and they respond in worship. That's one of the reasons why when we have a worship service, we have the sermon, but then we have a response to the sermon, which is a worship song, because our response to hearing the word of God should be to worship God. But then you have these other men who are dispersed throughout the crowd and they are helping the people understand the law. So perhaps this is in the afternoon, after Ezra is done reading the law. We're not exactly sure of the timeline here, but you have these other men who are throughout. And what they're doing is they're reading from the book, the law of God clearly, and they're giving the sense so that the people can understand the reading. So you have the public proclamation of the word of God, which is responded to in worship. And then you have like smaller group teachings of the word of God. So Jeshua's teaching this group of people and Bani's teaching this group of people and Sherebiah's got this group over here and Jamin's got this group over here, etc. And so there's a smaller group, but it's still instruction. Instruction from one who has studied and who understands what it means. They're giving people the word of God and the sense of the word of God. Now, there's also a desire to be obedient to God. The, the, there's not just let the emotions go. That's not what's happening here because Ezra and Nehemiah, they're seeing that the, the people, the Levites, they're seeing that as the people are hearing the word, the word of God, the law of God, they're realizing how uh, they just haven't kept it. They, they haven't lived it. And there's, there's threatenings of punishments and they've already experienced those threatenings of punishments being carried out. Now they're starting to put pieces together and realizing because we as a nation have been negligent of God's word for generation after generation, we have now suffered these consequences, and, and, and we're just overwhelmed and distressed. But they say, Nehemiah, Ezra, the Levites, they say to the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. This day that God has given, this holy day, this day of the Lord, 
is a day that you don't mourn or weep on. Uh, the Lord's Day, every Sunday, we do confess our sins and we do receive assurance of forgiveness, but it is a day to be celebrating the gospel and to rejoice in the Lord and to enjoy fellowship. See, they also went eating and drinking. So we have a fellowship food table after the worship service, but sometimes later in the day on Sunday, we will regather as a church for a fellowship meal uh, and sometimes the singing of hymns. So it is a day for celebration and a day for fellowship and a day for, for welcoming people in and making them feel welcome. There's a great order to this uh, that makes sense. So the word is proclaimed, God is worshiped, the word is read and taught and instructed, the people are told, yeah, you might feel bad, but this is a time to celebrate because God is being good to you. And so they celebrate. And then what they realize is, hey, it's the seventh month. And this book of the law that we just read about tells us all about the, the Feast of Booths. And they learn that as the heads of fathers' houses of all the people come together to Ezra the scribe in order to study the words of the law. So proclamation, instruction, and now heads of houses come to study, the study of the word of God. And then they realize we need to obey the Lord by keeping this Feast of Booths. It's amazing that this Feast of Booths had not been celebrated during the entire history of Israel in the Promised Land. Since the days of Jeshua the son of Nun, that's Joshua the son of Nun. This is slightly different rendering. So Jeshua the son of Nun here, that's the same name as the high priest, uh, from the first generation who came in with Zerubbabel, Jeshua. And that's actually the same name as Jesus. So that's this is the same Hebrew name. And it's a name that means salvation. So Jeshua, the son of Nun, since, since the days of Joshua until then this day, the people had never kept the Feast of Booths. That's amazing. They had kept Passover. We know that. But they had not kept the Feast of Booths, which is the final harvest feast where the, the in-gathering and so they, so they obey God. They obey God and they go out and they make booths for themselves uh, on top of houses and in public squares and in the courts so that they can keep what God has told them. And they keep it as a festival and then the feast for seven days and then the eighth day, a solemn assembly according to the rule. So this is a wonderful picture of a community that is committed to Hearing God's word proclaimed, hearing God's word taught, digging in to study God's word, but not just so that they can say, hey, aren't we smart? We can pass a Bible trivia challenge now. No, it's not for that. It's for worship and obedience in faithfulness. That's what it's for. So we are people of God and the Bible is given to us so that we can know God better. We should be eager to proclaim it and hear it proclaimed and worship God. We should be eager to teach it and hear it taught. We should be eager to study it for ourselves and teach it to our families. We should be eager to grow in it so that we can worship and obey God rightly. Would you please join me in praying that Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, or if you go to another church, your church where you go, join me in praying that our churches would be churches like this, Nehemiah 8 churches, where the word of God is central, it is preached, it is taught, it is studied, and our response to the word of God is to worship and obey. Even obeying in ways that are inconvenient and costly and may not be what we feel like, but in the end, it's a greater blessing. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've been so good to us to call us to yourself. You've been so good to us to, to lead us to Jesus and to have salvation in his name. You've made us your people. You've set us apart from the world. You've consecrated us to yourself. We are your church. Help us to be faithful. May we hear your word proclaimed. Proclaim it faithfully. May we hear your word taught, teach it faithfully. May we study your word together in community so that we might worship you and rejoice in you 
and obey you as our God and our King. Father, reform and revive your church according to your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. That is Nehemiah chapter 8. Uh, what a blessing. Luke 6 is on tap for tomorrow. Join me for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord.